This is the SCS900 base and rover setup tutorial. Just kind of give you a rough um, basic idea of every kind of job that you want to set up. Um, so the first thing it's going to do is once you open up the program, SCS900, it'll show you this new open site menu. You're going to have your site, your work order, and your design. You're going to automatically remember your last job you were at. So for this example, we're going to pretend like we're coming to a new job. And I'm going to show you how to basically set up a base from scratch. So we're going to make sure it's the right job. And usually our work order is going to be calibration. And then we're going to also make sure it's the latest design. <coughs> and it is. So we're going to accept that. Once it loads up, it's going to send us right to uh, the receiver setup. It defaults to wanting you to set up the rover. So we're going to have to go up there and change the rover to base. So the mode needs to actually be base. So we'll go ahead and hit that. And now this is automatically going to default settings for you. And there's a couple things we want to change in here. But you can't change it while it's defaulted autofilled. So in order to get around that, I'm going to show you a little workaround. Um, we're going to go to connection type where it says Bluetooth. And we're going to change that to table. So I'll go here, table. And I'm going to select COM17, and it's going to fail the system. Once it fails the system, we're allowed to now switch the connection type back to Bluetooth, and it'll let us go step by step to each box. Um, so I'm going to hit Bluetooth, and then it's going to have a list of devices that it has connected to in the past, but I typically don't want to just trust that because a couple things is this is just a memory, this is not a true connection. It's just saying, hey, I've connected to these devices before. So what I usually recommend is to scan for devices. So we're going to do that here. We're going to scan for nearby devices. And it's going to search all Bluetooth devices around. That could be even your phone it could be picked up or other Bluetooth devices. So what's important here is it's going to spit out a serial code and a device name. We're going to want to make sure those match. A device did show up, SPS 986 and SPS 8500. We're going to go ahead and select the SPS 8500 because that is the base. The SPS 9865 is actually the rover head. Right now we're just setting up the base. So SPS 855 is what we want. We want to do radio and receiver for connection correction method. And then for network ID, um, we, we typically run on 10. But all this is is saying which network that we're going to run our base and rovers on and all our equipment. So for this example, we're going to do 10. And for Willamette Valley Excavating, we typically do network 10 unless there's some sort of conflict. And now this is important for the network ID is 10. And then we're going to go base position. We want that to be control point. You're going to have three options here, control point, latitude, longitude, height, and base anywhere. And we are going to do control point. Hit control point, and now it's going to pop you into the, the map view. Um, so we're going to need to zoom up here a little bit. Um, so I'm going to hit the box icon and then zoom up. And here I see the names of all the control points. And I can also see one called Chick fil A. And this job is Chick fil A. And so when we calibrate the site, we will create a control point where the base pole is at. And we'll typically name that after the job. So here we see that it's called Chick-fil-A, so I immediately know that must be my base. So I will go ahead and highlight it. Now, if I wanted to just see what other control points are in the area, say the, the design name's not popping up, I can hit this on the top right, there's going to be a drop down menu. I can select that, and it will drop down all the control points in the area. Typically, control points have a number to them if they're actually a surveyed control point, and our base station will have the name of the job. So that's a good, quick way to find um, the base. So I'm going to go ahead and check, hit Chick-fil-A. Also, if you are wanting to, perhaps your control points aren't showing the name, you can go to Settings. And then on the Map Options at the top left, you'll see it says Point Names. You can go ahead and select that or deselect that, as well as Point Elevations. And that will, um, it will show the names of all the control points living with, with it referenced. All right, we're going to hit OK to that. 
And now we're back to receiver setup. All right, so we've our modem and base, we're connection type Bluetooth, Bluetooth device, SPF 855, correction method radio receiver, network ID 10, base position control point, base name's Chick-fil-A. And now the antenna, we want it to be a Zephyr Geodetic Model 2. Um, we'll hit that drop down button just to look at it and make sure it's the right one. And sure enough, it's a Zephyr Geodetic Model 2. Um, if you ever needed to confirm that, you can look at the bottom of your dish and that it will tell you what model number it is. All right, so when we hit OK on that, it's going to take us immediately to the measure method. We want it to be bottom of the antenna. We want the vertical height to be zero. Um, a quick reason for this is we already know our base position, our control points on the top of the base pole where the dish is sitting. Um, in some other cases, like this picture showing, you may set up your dish on a tripod over a control point, and then you will need to know the exact vertical height from the control point to your dish um, so that your dish can be the right elevation. We're going to say zero, and then it's going to ask for which correction method or which corrections. Um, we're going to use the CMRX as our radio. The CMRX, difference between CMRX and CMR Plus. CMRS, the CMR Plus is more standard, um, say if you're using TopCon or other survey equipment. CMRX is specific to Tremble, um, and it's less heavy of a signal, so there's less bandwidth to it. Um, sometimes this can have issues with multiple devices, but for this case, typically our job, we just use CMRX. We'll accept that, and that's going to try to finish the base setup. It's going to shoot out a name, info, so you have your base name, your longitude, latitude, and your height, base radio, vertical height, antenna. Um, that antenna height APC is to the center of the antenna, that 0.28, and that's correct. Um, that's the, the center of that dish. So we're going to say OK to that, and our base should be set up. Now you're going to notice that right away, it's going to pop you up to your map, but you're not going to have any elevations. You're not going to have any true data. Um, and that's because we just set up the base on the pole. The rover is not set up yet, which is um, what we're going to do next.